as you've probably seen in the schedule, it's uh, about uh, managing the chain of the principle. Um, hands up. Uh, who, who of you does not know what chains are and what they're used for? Okay, so I'll leave, I'll not talk about that then. Um, yeah, I'm, about me, I'm a sysadmin, have been using mostly Linux in the last 20, 22 years, something like that. So forgive me if some of the paths that I have been choosing, choosing for the demonstration part uh, might be slightly strange for FreeBSD users. Please don't hang me or anything about <laughs> for that. <laughs> it's just recovery, that's fine. <laughs> so, um, I'm relatively new to FreeBSD compared. I mean, it's like about five years or something like that. I mean, it has been some time, but it's still compared, it's not that much. Um, so, the first question that I got in the past and is why the hell would you want to do the, the chain management uh, bare metal with just Ansible? Um, there are that many, there are that many other two ways to do that. And I mean, one of the things that I hear, yeah, there is tool X that can already do that for any number of tools X. Uh, well, yes, they can do that. They might not always do what you want to do. Um, yeah, so yes, of course, um, there is that argument. Um, I hope it's not only not invented here syndrome that I'm trying to do that. Um, one thing that I heard about uh, from FreeBSD free people against Ansible is that you suddenly have uh, Python as a dependency. Well, personally, I don't care because I'm using Ansible to manage most of my machines anyway, regardless if I how I set up the jails first. So this dependency is already there for me. And if you're using IOKH, you also have Python as a dependency. So I don't really see that as a problem. Um, the other thing, that you do here is that it's complicated. I've heard that when I started to use FreeBSD, don't try to do jails, but uh, don't try to do jails bare metal. It's just much too complicated. Choose one of the management tools that it will work. Um, no, we are at the contrast. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that's true. Um, as you might see, it's not that complicated. I mean. Yes, it gets complicated if you want to do more complex things at some point. Having some management tool, yeah. Uh, you also hear other things. So, but on the other hand, why I'm going to do that? Um, I'm already using Ansible to set up most of the other stuff, so I'm quite comfortable with it. I already have all the dependencies that it brings with it, so it doesn't add extra dependencies, at least not for me, uh, that might be different for other people. Um, yeah, just for that reason, I already have Python as a dependency. Also, I'm using quite a few other Python applications anyway. Um, so I don't see that as a dependency, uh, as a negative thing. It's also Python has the advantage for me that I'm relatively fluent in it. So it's relatively easy for me to do stuff with it. Um, and the, the last part is one of the important things why, uh, for me why I started that, but if you try really to put together all the stuff, you start at some point to get to know better what is actually going on. That doesn't mean that you have to do that always, personally I also use IOKH for some installations. Um, it's not bad, it works. I had some problems when upgrading to FreeBSD 12, but otherwise um, it's, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with it. That's really not an issue, but I still want to do that. And well, so probably quite a few other things that you could say. So what building blocks do we have that 
we need for that? Well, obviously, we're going to need FreeBSD, otherwise doing FreeBSD jails will be a bit hard. Um, well, the, the jail command and its man page is a quite good source where you can actually find what what can you actually configure in the jailsconf. Uh, sorry, jailconf, not jailsconf. So that's you're going to need that. We're I um, have been using quite a bit of the features of ZFS actually. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, you could probably do it without. I, for my use cases, I don't see why I should. I have enough resources on the machines that, in, yeah, of course, if you have 128 megabytes of RAM, you probably won't do that, but otherwise, well. Um, obviously, there is SSH, uh, because Ansible uses that for remote communication. You have Python. And you have one dependency that's a bit strange to me. I didn't find out why yet, but for some reason uh, Ansible insists of having GNUtar for extracting archives. Don't ask me exactly why. I was not able to go through the code why they're insisting on it. But it throws errors if you if you try to use the PSD tar, and it really complains about it. I have no idea. Um, there are a few Ansible modules that are quite useful for that. So for bootstrapping the whole thing, you first. The thing, the thing is, if you start with Ansible on, on the target host, you will have to have Python installed there. Um, the raw module lets you do that. It's, so you can actually use Ansible to install Python on the target machine. Um, yes, you could also do it by hand. I find it convenient if I can do it that way. Well, PackageMG, ZFS, the PackageMG module ZFS, uh, get URL to get actually the, the, the files that we want to install and then yeah unpacking it some templating to generate config files um, creating some empty files controlling some services and sometimes I need to run manual commands uh, for example the service module it's not completely up to the task yet. I have to see if I can patch that. And I'm also showing some uh, trickery with uh, dynamic inventory. Um, yeah, there is uh, also a nice thing. There is actually a plugin, a uh, connection plugin, so that you can actually remotely manage the jails without having to have SSH in them. That's, so it basically uses JXEC, but you don't have to script that by hand, which is quite useful. You just say, well, the connection is that, and then it's the same like with any other host you're going to use. Sorry, any question? I want that one, because I'm using the, the gel connector. Yeah. To, but you have to be root and you have to be on the same host. Yeah, yeah, this one actually does. Remotely. This one does SSH. Uh, you could probably use the, the built-in chain connector with with delegate. I haven't tried that. I mean, it's, it should be possible, but it, I think it gets messy. Um, this one, I mean, it's a third party, but it seems to work quite fine. So that's uh, <laughs> the reason why I put it up there. Um, yeah, putting it together. That's basically the configuration that I have for the first jail. I'll just have, I cut it off a bit here because the paths were going, getting too long, but it's just along the path, the path, uh, the path to the Python interpreter. Um, and then there is some uh, SHA-512 uh, SHA sums because I mean we are downloading we're downloading stuff that we actually afterwards installing. So I want to be sure that it's actually what I think I'm installing and not uh, there has been no trickery. Uh, and a simple, a relatively simple uh, 
configuration for a jail, but as it is there, it doesn't really tilt that much. Um, so the steps are, I, I'll have a, a demonstration and then show you the code as well. Um, so in, in, in principle, the steps are quite good, uh, simple. I mean, first you prepare the host. Um, then we're setting up a few ZFS data set uh, where we actually want to put the jails. Um, download whatever versions of FreeBSD you want to install. Um, to be fair, I've only tested uh, 11.2 and 12.0. 11.2 uh, for historical reasons because I actually started the whole project before 12.0 was released. So uh, I didn't try any older versions. Uh, there might be some things I don't catch with them. Yeah, I mean, it's quite simple. You just extract it. Next thing, yeah, you apply some configuration. So I also have it in there that I automatically call FreeBSD update because I mean, why? I mean, I'm building a new jail, so I actually want to have security updates applied. Um, yeah, create a few files that we need to create, and then call the template for our uh, for our jail conf. There is an error in the <laughs> slides. Um, then afterwards, I'm going to start the, the jails, uh, insta install Python in the jails so that we can actually manage the, the jails themselves now afterwards. So, going to have a small demo. Um, so. Did you block the check size a bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm at it. Oh, is that better? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the shop with 12 sums can go up a bit now, but it's, it's not really. So, here you have the configuration. Uh, yeah, the name server fits for the, fits for the, the network where my test machine is, uh, is there. So, just installing a few packages. I have htop in there because I used it while debugging, um, creating, and that was as I said. I mean, slash SRV is probably a bit Linux y, but I don't care. Uh, you can use everything else. I hard coded these paths because, well, for my use cases, it was fine and it just increases complexity. complexity if I add that there, um, yeah, creating, creating a few data sets. <coughs> um, yeah, for the chains themselves, actually also set quarters. Um, you can mostly set most uh, ZFS properties here. The module is quite flexible in that way. Uh, the disadvantage is uh, it cannot really tell you before it tries to apply stuff if it's going to work or not, because it just simply doesn't know. On the other hand, that way you can set whatever you want and it doesn't have to know if it's ZFS on Linux, if it's FreeBSD 8, if it's FreeBSD 12, what kind of features they have. It's just, it's just a dictionary. And it just says, well, you have, you're have you trying to apply this property with this value, and it sets it. <laughs> yeah. Downloading, um, extracting. I have a little template for resolve conf that's not that uh, interesting. Yeah, they're just creating empty files for now. And... Yeah, they're just calling FreeBSD update from the from the actually from the host because I actually want to do that before first actually starting the jail. Um, yeah, there. I tell it that yeah, actually we should start jails on on boot, and then I have this. I'll show you the yeah there. I'll, I'll show you the template. Interesting. 
which playbook are we looking at now? This uh, is this is the one for configuring. That's the for the that that's the demo. It does the host. And uh, that's one demo shell. Okay. It's uh, it, it's a relatively simple playbook. Um, that's also the reason why I put the, the configuration variables directly in the playbook. I wouldn't do that for for I wouldn't do that for a productive one. Obviously, I would probably put them in host bars, for example. Uh, the configuration for the different shell hosts. I didn't do that here because it's just simpler to show you if it's just one file. It's too abstracting for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, it's just... Uh, I, I, I took out the abstraction here because it's just... Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was a bit easier to, to show you. Um, and then here we have some... Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a... Well, simple or not ginger template. <laughs> That's probably up, up to the reader. Um, the disadvantage of doing it that way is that um, I'm mostly directly putting in the stuff so it doesn't really check the values. So the way I'm doing it here, it's really flexible, but it doesn't prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> um, so that's just for the jails. Um, you can have whatever settings. There is just if if you remember in the in the, in the variables there is this uh, extra parameter the parameters and it just directly puts them in there. Um, that's something I'll show you later. Um, with, with the SSH gel connector, you don't need SSH in every uh, gel. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't have SSH enabled in the gels. <laughs> At the moment, um, it gets even more important because the project I started this all for. Um, my idea is actually to not have IP connectivity in the chain, <laughs> so SSH can be a bit of a problem if you don't have IP. Yeah. <laughs> You're not trying <laughs> yeah, I could probably do it, but no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, just starting <coughs> up the jails. Um, then I'm going to install Python. I did all my testings with Python 3.36. Uh, the SSH chain connector actually tells you to use Python 2.7. I didn't run into any problems using 3.6, and I don't want to do any new projects with 2.7 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. And here uh, I have a little trick. Uh, I'm collecting because I didn't want to have two lists of jails. Um, I'm collecting all the jails I have in my list. I mean, in this case, it's only one, but I'm, I'm collecting them and dynamically adding them to the inventory. Uh, and here you see the here you see the configuration for the SSH jail connector, where you basically have jail them at and uh, then the SSH host. That's just the syntax they use. Um, and then I set the, the, Ansible, is this, uh, the Ansible connection module for that host. Just as simple as that. And there you ha I have a second playbook in there that afterwards does some changes in the, in the chairs. Obviously, I could just do them. I mean, it's mostly of that is, is file editing. I could have done that from the host as well, but it was just so I can show that. It seems to be the newest uh, uh, syntax for uh, with items. It just loops over the list. Because um, if I go up here, uh, as you can see, uh, jails is a list. I mean, it currently only has one entry because right. uh, I, I thought that was, that was enough for the, for the demo, but... Yeah. All right. Thanks. So, and if I'm running, if I'm going to run that... Uh, so, just have to check. Right 
one. So um, the other thing is uh, I'm currently using uh, SU here for, for become. Um, most productive uh, cases I actually use sudo because I think it's a bit more convenient. Um, but otherwise, I mean, that's, yeah, it's probably, it, it, you can, can do a bit more with it. I just, in this case, I really minimized what I needed to install. Where? Uh, sorry? Where is the host that we're running this on? Uh, that's in Vienna in the data center. It's a virtual machine, so it's okay. probably, yeah, you have, it's a bit, so we have a bit of a downtime with the, as in, with the, with the connections here. So, so. Did that actually just download that, or was it already present? That should have been downloaded. I can, I can make yeah, sure that delete it, but it's. A fast connection. Uh, well, it has a, it has a, it has a gigabit connection to the internet <laughs> because it's downloading it on the host. So, but I can, I can do that. No, because I mean, for the fun of it, why not? Um, it's it's a it's a test machine, so uh, I'm I'm quite open to just uh, stopping and deleting things. Uh, so and then let's destroy. Oh, there's something open. Just um, so the um, so so I mean I don't so what I wanted to do in this case was really uh, not having not not having to copy the data from my local machine. That's the reason why I use it use the get URL because um, it saves me from having to upload it from a DSL connection or I mean worst case I'm on some mobile connection that's more or less of a so I hope I just to destroy anything but I don't think so. Sorry? Yeah. No it's just uh, it's just uh, I have a slight idea where the problems could be. Not up again. Yeah, it's it's a virtual machine, so the boot time is relative. Otherwise, I wouldn't have <laughs> typed reboot during a. Uh, so I'll just destroy the whole data set, so there will be no nothing in there. So it really will get will be downloading everything. Okay. So um, it's also the machine, the, the virtualization host that I'm using is not the fastest one, so that also take it costs us some time here. It's only my personal machine. Um, Yes, 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 of course. But I mean, Ansible does by default if you don't configure it otherwise, but I'm using it otherwise as well. Okay, now it, uh, I'm doing that with, what was it, 2.7, I think. So relatively recent. Um, I found that it really pays to, to, keep, your, to keep your playbooks compatible with a, with a current version because the improvements over time have been quite a bit. So I think I started with 1.7 or something some years ago. Uh, but you see in the first data set it's, it's not that it's not that bad, uh, the download times. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how, how much of that was actually checking the checksum. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I mean, um, I can also upload the, the, the test playbooks. 
that I have. It's not a problem. There is nothing secret in there. Um, so, yeah, that takes some time because the CPU is not as fast. Uh, yeah. While this is running, um, yeah. the reason I'm interested in this is I'm looking at getting away from the L managers altogether. And at the moment, the way I solve my uh, PL problems is I give everyone an SSH connection. Yeah. And I have a, a super user that can SSH in mm -hmm. with CD access. Yeah. If I can do that with the host, that collapses a whole lot of stuff into one. Yeah. Now that the, the SSH connector, you can also configure which users are involved there. Um, so that's quite flexible. And I mean, it, it, it somewhat solves some problems also. I mean, yes, because otherwise you have to configure jump hosts and stuff like that if you don't have a public IP for every jail, which well, I don't, at least not for three, four. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have the same issue, and with like a lot of jails on one 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 host, you run out of ideas, and we yeah. um, just started deploying IPv6 for all the jails. That's not a bad idea anyway, but <laughs> it's very convenient and <laughs> saved us a lot of headaches. Yeah. No, but it's in, in this case, it's also uh, to some degree for me actually to just also reduce the attack surface because I mean. Every uh, every service that's not running there out there cannot be attacked. Yes, we firewall SSH anyway for all the noise. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it's it's, <laughs> uh, it's it's just that um, so that's a bit more convenient for me um, to use it there. And I, I found I, I was actually a colleague actually uh, showed showed uh, mentioned that to me. That it's out there, and I just okay, yeah, that looks nice. <laughs> Why not use that? Um, yeah. Uh, as you can see, I mean, the, the five gigabytes of motor are quite arbitrary. <laughs> it's just um, what I didn't pack in that tutorial here. Uh, what I didn't pack in here is obviously, if you do it productively, you might want to do firewalling and stuff like that. Probably even VNet. I don't have that in here yet. I mean, it adds some it adds some configuration, but it's not that bad. Um, so also, for example, I mean things like I don't want to run send mailing on my <laughs> channels. <laughs> I don't really want to run send mail anyway, but uh, <laughs> I. I if I can help it, I don't want to do it. I want to don't want to run an email server, <laughs> but I do anyway. Um, yeah. So now it's done. Uh, yeah, it's um, one thing I've currently. You might have seen that uh, my call is a bit longer. Um, I so far didn't install the SSH jail connector uh, globally. That's the reason why I'm giving it here. I'm, I'm just giving the path. Because if I don't do that, it will just say, well, sorry, but I can't find the, connect, the connection plugin you're trying to use. <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> Go away. So, um, so that was that. Was that. Um, yeah. Uh, OK, I mixed up. Yeah, uh, uh, was already in the in the demo. So some small things that I did. Uh, as I said, uh, product in production, it's probably a better idea to do that before starting the jail. It was just so I can also show. Um, it's quite easy to just um, uh, uh, to, to just run it from the host, so you don't have to do any. You, you don't have to necessarily SSH into your jail. Yeah. Super clear on your first point there. Like I saw your block of yeah. code in the playbook to use add host, the add host module yeah. for adding the jails mm -hmm. into the inventory. I'm not clear. I'm still. I'm not wrapping my head around what's going on there. So like, well, when you executed Ansible, you were using so I host. What 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 did I did I do? I only have four convenience reasons in this case. Um, I only have my 
well, not physical, but virtual host, uh, in the host's inventory, in, 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 in the fixed one. Um, because I didn't want to have to have two lists of where I don't I didn't want to have two places where I have to define my jails. So that's the reason why I dynamically add them. Um, obviously, you could do that in your hosts file, or you could use some other dynamic inventory that does it via database or whatever you fancy. I mean, uh, Ansible is quite flexible in that way. That's just um, the, 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 that's just the, 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 the reason why I collected them there was that I'd only have one place where I have to define them. <laughs> as simple as that. Um, yeah, so I, the, I, collect, uh, I collapsed these two demos. <laughs> um, the other thing is that I, that I did, which I think is also quite useful and I actually that's the end result that I'm also trying to use in production is uh, to have configure my applications and I have a few use cases where I wanted to have multiple copies ten, uh, tens and twenties and pro probably a hundred copies of the same web application running but uh, for each customer having its own jail because I somewhat don't trust DHP applications if it comes to user isolation. Um, I might be paranoid, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, so that's the reason why I chill them off. And so the idea behind that is uh, slightly more advanced. I say, okay, I have my, I, I have my uh, copy, I, I have my more or less pre-configured application shell. I'll just do a set of as clone because, well, we have it, why not use it? Um, then have for the application that uh, the application data create uh, a data set. Um, reason behind of keeping that separate is that if I want to update the application, I just want to throw away the old clone shells and then uh, reattach, reattach, the, uh, re reattach the, the data to the new ones. Um, yeah, recreate shellconf, of course, again. And then uh, do some configuration in shell, for example, um, setting a mount point for my uh, data set. So I'll just have the demo too. So here we have a new point in the configuration where we have clone um, jails that again well says well what do we want to clone? Um, I have for the second data set I have that has its own quota since it shouldn't change anything. I have relatively relatively low I have a relatively low quota here. Um, and some things that are, well, of course, the, the cloning, I'll have uh, the data data set, and here I'll just delegate, uh, I'm, I'm going to delegate that to the jail, so it can, can be managed within the jail. Um, I can have sub data sets and everything, and can do that in the jail. Um, Again, and then I'll, I'll show you in a minute uh, the, 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 the second part of the jail conf, which is actually where that happens. And yeah, I mean that's the same as that's the same as before. Uh, in this case, in the configuration, I'm going to set for the data for for the initial data set. I'll set the mount point, and then I'll just for for showing. That it's possible. Um, we're going to create a, a data set within the jail. And so, uh, and here the, the second part. That's the, that's the second loop. 
So obviously, if I want to, if I want to mount uh, ZFS in the jail, I have to relax a few security settings because, well, otherwise it won't allow mounting. <laughs> Um, so I'm allowing these, these phrasing to be necessary from every documentation I've read. Uh, and then I just, uh, I'm chilling the, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling the, uh, I'm, I'm chilling and I'm chilling the data set. Uh, just as um, here. Um, I'm running that here on created, uh, which is before the init script is going to be started, because obviously I want to have I, ha I want to have it mounted at that point. Um, and here, yeah, I mean that's the same as above. And this data set is just something for the user within there to do their own stuff. Yeah, I mean my my use case in this uh, my my first uh, use case for that is Nextcloud, so. They're going to put some data in there, okay. and uh, yeah, of course, I could also I, mean, I could also Malafest mount it into it, but I find it a bit more convenient because it's more flexible uh, to do it that way. Um, it's also a bit more convenient because it's actually possible within the jail to correctly guess how much space is actually left there, which is a bit tricky with the Malifest mount and then it runs out of the it runs out of disk space without the, the user being warned about it, which is inconvenient. Because they start complaining when it doesn't work. <laughs> and I can't even say that what can say to them that they should have looked. <laughs> um, Yeah, I should probably create the snapshot that it tries to clone. <laughs> that. So, because I, I really deleted the whole, uh, I really recursively <coughs> deleted the whole data set before. So, obviously the, obviously the snapshot it tries to clone is not there. <laughs> yeah. Um. Obviously, I've been thinking about if I want to uh, use uh, ZFS send and receive. Probably somewhere, I'm not sure, but the clone works just fine for me at the moment. Um, yeah. But all in all, I mean, it, it took some debugging, and uh, one problem is a bit that if you do more complex, uh, my experience is that if you do more complex templates, uh, it sometimes is a bit hard to debug because the error messages that Ansible gives you if there is an error in your template are at least to me not always clear. So. We have now. So, and if we go to, that's the that's the test machine again, and we now have two chains running. I have the test pre jail and the clone one jail, and if we go into the jail. You can also see you can see the data set there. Um, yeah. So that works reasonably well. I mean obviously the more you want to do, the more the more the more work it is. Um, 
one of the one of the advantages for me of having less dependencies is also that uh, you're not going to be you're not going to run into problems when upgrading or when you're using some strange platform because for example I'm also interested in power 9 <laughs> So there is always so well no the other stuff is might not be that tested there. <laughs> um, also with IO caging I ran into some serious trouble when upgrading because uh, at the point I was upgrading to 12.0 uh, shortly after the release uh, the version in packages uh, of IO cage was not yet compatible to FreeBSD 12, <laughs> which was inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm a bit fast, I think. Um, so some further reading. Uh, the second entry is actually uh, it's a bit hard to read, I think, but I'll, I'll upload the slides. Um, was actually uh, the presentation that um, inspired me to try this. Uh, it was a presentation by a colleague in the local BSD user group in Austria, in Vienna. And, and he was just showing it to us. Uh, I'll upload the slides, I think that's easier. <laughs> um, and uh, so it showed us, I mean, it's a bit dated not by now because it was done for 11.2. Um, the first one is also a bit dated, so you, it still is valid, but for a few things you have to you have to look at it because th things like uh, CIS5 uh, IPC, for example, changed, as uh, Michael Lucas already mentioned in his in his talk. So be careful with with references. Always also I, I usually uh, try to also check in the main page. Was it uh, if if I if I'm if I find anything in a in a many, uh, in a, in an example I usually look up in the main page and say well okay what that what is that actually supposed to do if that's, that's still current um, if you use it that way it's quite useful I'd also link the the SSH jail connector there um, so far um, yeah. Are there any questions? When did you start working with Ansible? I'm not sure. Probably five years ago. It was some f one seven, I think. <laughs> but uh, please don't. I'm I'm not completely sure, but it must have been something like that. So in your in your daily work, do you have to work with both tools, or how did you start doing this? Um, to be fair, in my daily paid work at the moment, it's uh, mostly Linux, and I also managed uh, Windows machines with Ansible, uh, even before they had proper Windows support. Because if you install an SSH server, it was possible even before that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, we did that as well. I'm managing Raspberry Pis with it to run Linux. I'm also using it to to uh, adapt and generate um, SD card images for Raspberry Pi. When I so I'm starting up the the Raspberry Pi image uh, in the in on the local machine with uh, QMO static emulation, <laughs> running the operating system, and then adapting it, and then. Putting everything together and producing a, a, an image and like stuff like that. <laughs> so I do like it. I mean, yes, Ansible. I, I I'm aware it's probably not the fastest method uh, from all the configuration management tools out there. Um, it also has a bit of a disadvantage against things like. Um, uh, things like uh, Puppet, for example, because it doesn't really do transactions. So, if any of your operations <laughs> fail, it can't really do it. It can't do an automatic rollback, which you have to keep in mind. It also has advantages, though. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, for for me, one of the advantages is that it's relatively fast to to get going. 
uh, it gets more complicated over time, but it, it's rel it, 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 it doesn't have a really high entry barrier, which I think it's quite useful. Regarding any issues managing users and groups on previous I've not done that. Uh, yeah, it was the, the question was if I ran into any uh, issues managing users and groups on FreeBSD, not so far. But uh, there might be use cases where I have. I mean, uh, mo to be I fair, most of, most of my experience is on Linux, so. If you don't smoke the BSD machine, we find that it's a little bit dodgy in some of the corner cases for that. Okay, so. And, just wondering how, you know, how prevalent that might be across all the PSDs because I know it doesn't get as much exposure as the Linux stuff does. Yeah. Is like creating users and, and groups or modifying them or where, where do you see issues? Um, a lot of it's actually shell damage where we want to set a default shell and then be able to do overrides and we found that on open nine times out of ten it doesn't do what we think it should do to it. I'm not sure it's still to be fair, um, I don't usually, uh, for most systems, I don't explicitly set a shell for the user, I just leave the defaults for the system. Um, reason behind that in my case is that I'm sometimes using the same definitions across multiple systems and since the paths between Linux and the BSDs are different. I'll just leave the defaults and tell the users if you want to change it, change it. And they just have to yeah, change the, sh the shells themselves if they want to. Um, that's, uh, but that, that's the, well, lazy, the, 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 the lazy way I'm doing it because I just didn't want to have this list with, well, if it's this, this operating system, please use that path. And if it's that operating system, please use that path. And then I also have to keep a list of which user wants to use which shell because I have users with different preferences. So I just told them, well, it's going to be bin SH. And if you don't like that, which most users as an interactive shell probably don't, um, please change it. Is your code online? Uh, not yet, but I uh, can publish it. It's not a problem. Because I, I'm keen to find something uh, that I can use for all the jails. Yeah. Because I've got like 75 jails on four hosts, and it's a pain. I want to find a better way of, of the jail management, not just the jail internals. At the moment, I'm only managing the jail internals, treating it as a host, not as a jail. Okay. And um, uh, I, I looked at BS, BS, D deploy, BS deploy or something like that ages ago, but didn't do anything with it, and I don't recall why. I, I, I'm not sure. I looked at it also some time ago, but I'm not sure why I didn't do that. Um, no. I, don't, I don't know either. Um, I'm, I'm not completely sure. It has been some time ago, so I'm, it, it slipped my mind. Olivier is keen on it. I'm keen on it. Sure, we get other people to help yeah. your code. Like I can, I can publish what I have. It's not that sophisticated yet, because I didn't get around to actually finishing the productive code that I want to use. Yeah, but <laughs> so I mostly have dem demos at the moment. But uh, I'm sure you'll get contributors quickly. Yes. I think BS Deploy had a dependency on EasyJL, uh, and it didn't work with anything else. Yeah, system report or something like that. And I want to go outside the because it's not maintained anymore. It is maintained, but not as people might wish, I think. It doesn't even support jail.com. It's still around jail. It does it support jail.com, but that wasn't an issue because the whole jail.com is mandatory thing was yeah. pulled back, right? Yeah. Well, that Confirmed. I found the easy jail mention on BSD. Yes. Yeah, I, they're cool strings. And, and that's what I want to get away from is, is a jail manager, and that's why I'm really keen on your stuff. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I, it, for, for me, the, 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 first, the first reason why I started it was actually to learn how it internally works. 
but it seems to be quite useful. I mean, it's it's not it, it's it's really not that hard. I mean, yes, you should know what you're doing, but I found over the years that that's usually a good idea anyway. Um, there is quite a nice tool called JManage. It's a shell script that it's more or less just wraps around previously update and um, JAXEC and things like that. It is mm -hmm. an all we're at jail manage. Jail manage. Um, oh, yeah. It's by a guy named Matt Simerson. Yeah, kind of the first gen on Google. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I don't see any hands.